Welcome to Teaching History with Professor Bob, Elementary Edition, Volume 1, Archaeology Through Stonehenge. Welcome to Teaching History with Professor Bob. I'm Professor Bob. I've taught history for seemingly forever. I taught high school for 30 years, AP, regular classes, etc. and so on. I've taught college introductory Western Civ and American history also for 30 years. So that means I'm pretty good looking for 80 years of age, aren't I? I guess that picture that I keep over in the corner of the room here helps me out. But no, I double dipped. I would teach a night class while I was still teaching during the day. This is a little different. I intend to do a whole series of these teaching history with Professor Bob on a variety of subjects with different techniques and things that maybe other teachers or parents at home can use. But this one is about elementary. This is Teaching History Elementary Volume 1, The Preliterate Era. Now, my first wife was an elementary teacher. She thought, taught kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And when our children were born, we began torturing them with experiences and teaching them to do all sorts of different things. And I taught them how to recognize uh, cartouches and museums. And, you know, we're just filling their little skulls, their little tabula rasa up with all kinds of information. And when they went off to high school and elementary school, they did fine. And now we have grandchildren. One of my granddaughters is six, going on seven. And in her school district, they're not really sure whether they're going to do a hybrid, whether they're going to do in class. So my daughter opted to teach her at home. Now she has a degree in early childhood education. But she was a little nervous. She'd seen her mother do that for many years. And we homeschooled our children most of the way through uh, middle school. But they went to high school on their own. So I asked if I could try something. Could I teach her Western Civ? You're going, wait a minute, she's six years old. How is that going to work? Well, it's not all that difficult. You know, if you look at elementary curriculum, they don't even attempt to do anything from a Western Civ standpoint until fifth or sixth grade. And then it's pretty minimal, having taught in the high school, and there was a sophomore class when I taught in high school. They were pretty much blank what was going on. But I always thought little kids get very interested in dinosaurs, usually when they're four or five or long in there. And I learned how to pronounce those names long before I could see Dick and Jane run up the hill. And I thought, why not we try doing that? And so what we did was this. And I'm going to show you a whole variety of different things. Once a week, I have a Zoom lesson with Emma. It's hopefully designed to last 15 or 20 minutes. A little discussion at the beginning. Then I have a special set of PowerPoints that are included. And I will, at the end of this, I will pick one of them out that I use during this section. And well, I'll go through it with you. And then I will show you pictures of some of the homework assignments. Now, she had been in kindergarten last year. And when they closed down in March, they went to Zoom. So she's very familiar with operating in front of a television. Of course, her mother is there with her to help her out. And so I have been experimenting with different things to do. And it's been extremely rewarding for myself Emma certainly is having a good time, and so is my daughter. And so we decided that it would be okay to let me put a couple of these out on the web so that maybe it would help some people to do something like this on their own. I would point out the web has lots of elementary teachers online that have all sorts of items that they have that they've used that they're willing to sell you for a little bit or they're willing to give you or give you just suggestions. So don't be afraid. The idea behind what I did was this. I have a group of words that she's, we, we pronounce them, and then we pronounce them then at the end. 
then whatever the lesson is, then I go through some PowerPoints and she can ask questions and I'll ask her questions and we go back and forth. And then at the end, there is a homework assignment. And then we tell her what we're going to be doing the following week. And you'll see this, it's easier to explain when you look at the PowerPoint presentation. Because one of the things you want to do, you want to try to have something that's a hand-on ex uh, assignment. And we found some really good stuff. And you also want to make sure that if you can include pictures, either of the person you're teaching, the child you're teaching, or their family in certain areas, that makes it real interesting as well. Now, my wife passed away many years ago, and my second wife is a, is a psychology teacher and historian, and we've traveled in the last seven or eight years all over. We've been to Egypt and Greece and other places, so I have a real advantage. I, when we go on vacation, the two of us together take about 11,000 pictures and video clips and stuff, so I have a lot to choose from. So this is just an example of what I'm doing with Emma. Now I said this is the first unit. I, I call it pre-literate. I started with archaeology. We learned the difference between an archaeologist and what they did. And we went through some of the techniques. And it was really fascinating because as we're going through this, there's one where I'm showing her how they put pottery back together again. And she says, well, that's just like putting puzzles back together, isn't it? And I said, yes. And so we've done some things along those lines. And then anytime I showed her a picture, because we talked about Carter and some of the other early archaeologists, most of them had glasses and a mustache. So she thought it was me. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not that old. And, and then we've, we've gone, we went from archaeology to dinosaurs. We did two weeks on dinosaurs. So she learned the difference between paleontologists and archaeologists. And sometimes you don't know until they do their play how this soaks in. Three weeks after I did the lesson on paleontologists, she's playing with her dolls, and her mother, mother comes in, and she goes, Mama, I'm the paleontologist. You are going to be the archaeologist. You go over there and see if you can find some stuff. And she does it all the time. And so then we went from dinosaurs to early man, the different ages of stone, and then I did one on the uh, on Stonehenge, the t-shirts. I usually wear a t-shirt. I've got my Indiana Jones hat on, which is what I wore it for. So I try to have something on that is appropriate for what we're doing. I had to buy a couple of t-shirts on Egypt so because I only had one. And then I will sometimes pick her up a little outfit or send her an outfit and the thing that I really liked about Zoom, because one of the problems with, with being a teacher, having taught for so long, I know body language backwards and forwards. And I can tell immediately whether what I'm doing is working or not. So one of the problems with doing this, when you, I usually I'll film one of these and I'll go, well, I hope that went well, felt well. And look at it and go, oh, forget rid of this, try it again. But with the little Zoom thing, she's over in the corner. And I can tell immediately when she begins to kind of fade a little bit. So then I can go through and make changes. Now, as far as the PowerPoint presentation, it takes me almost as long to do a PowerPoint presentation for, for Emma as it does for me to do one of my classes. And I have extensive PowerPoint presentations. So frequently what I will do is take the section that I'm going to be covering with Emma I will put that into the program and then I'll remove the pictures that aren't going to be appropriate or update pictures that go with what's going on. Now, one of the advantages that I have with Emma is she lives in Denver. And Denver is the hotbed of dinosaur bones. So when we did dinosaur, that's why we did it for two weeks. They could go out. They could go out to Dinosaur Ridge. They could go to the, the, the motel that has dinosaur fossils in their lobby and go to the museums and other sort of places. So there's a lot of things that, that you can do. So at the end, what you're going to see, I'm going to show you the little PowerPoint presentation. I'll walk through it with you. I will then show pictures of Emma doing her homework through the whole period of this pre-literate section. 
and then I'm going to talk about some of the things that I picked up or her mother picked up to go with it. One of the downsides of being six is there isn't a lot of children's books written to do this. We bought several series of us born books and there's a couple of other companies that have some series and then I've spent hours going through the internet looking for some material. Now in the description, as they always say, the description down below, I will list the companies and the name of the product and the price that I purchased it for. But one of the things is, I mean, the whole idea is for them to have fun. And although I set it up to run 15 minutes, it's not uncommon for it to go 25. Last time, last week it went 27 minutes. We were doing mummification. And needless to say, she has been all week mummifying her LOL dolls. So let me show you what I do with her on these little PowerPoint presentations. In the video, I told you that I would just show you one lesson, but I decided to show you a couple of the beginnings of each lesson with some of the objects that I purchased for uh, Emma to do homework on. thought that might be helpful. So here you see the opening page of the archaeology lesson number one. And I always try to put a picture of myself, and if I have an appropriate picture of her, that's Emma in her Greek outfit, and some other things that go with what's going on, because she's very visually oriented. And then we move on to the words for this lesson. Here you see the words for this first lesson from archaeologist down to fossil. These are emailed to uh, Emma's mother and she makes a little note card out of them, prints them, and then goes over with them. And then when we start, I ask her to show me a card and then I pronounce the word and then she pronounces it and then I give an explanation. Now from this entire list, the intent is to understand what an archaeologist is, what archaeology does, and the difference between an artifact and a fossil. Before the class, I bought Emma a, this Kids Explorers kit. It comes with a jacket and a hat and a vest and all sorts of other little things to do the collecting with. And it's really cute. And here's a picture of her wearing it while we're doing our first homework assignment, which is to look for fossils. Now, the fossil excavating kit came from National Geographic. It's known as the big Mega Fossil Kit, and it comes with some other things as well. And she enjoyed working on that. It actually took her two weeks to get out all of the fossils that that were in there. They were very large size, very nice. The booklet that came with it for identification was perfect. And as far as she was concerned, it was worth it for one fossil. They had a cuprolite fossil in there, which is a fossilized dinosaur poop. And that just fascinated her. And then she decided that she could go out in the yard and collect poop because they have a dog. And Courtney had to stop her and say, no, no, it's not fossilized yet. It's not a it's not a fossil. It's you have to wait. So we had a little they had a little discussion over when when a fossil becomes a fossil. Now, Emma is six going on seven in the first grade, so she has some reading capabilities. But finding reading books for that age is pretty difficult. So we found this one, which is Archaeologists Dig for Clues, and that was that was good. Her, she read it, her, her mother read it to her, and but back and forth. And then the uh, well-pictured National Geographic reader over what is an archaeologist. So they, they fit very well. The following week, we had our next lesson, which is the beginning of Dinosaur. It's part one of two. So I have a picture that her mother sent me of her doing her fossil thing from last week. And then there's I'm standing next to a stuffed bear, and there's some pictures of myself standing around various dinosaurs. And a dinosaur that she is familiar with in the lower right-hand corner because it's in the museum there in Denver. So those are some of the things that we're looking at. And then we went to the lessons, the word lessons, paleontologist, dinosaur, down the Dr. Bacher. And she really connected with the paleontologist and the archaeologist because in her play during the following week, she was playing with her dolls and her LOL dolls and others and her mother was with her and, and Emma goes, Mama, you become you the archaeologist. I'd be paleontologist this time. And so they would, would go around through. They've been the Canyon City. Uh, they're the Royal Gorge. So again, this is just like what happened the last time. This happens in every lesson. These are sent out in advance 
lists. They're on cards. I read them. She reads them. And then we talk about them. Now, her homework this week was to finish excavating the fossils. But she also has a dinosaur thing to excavate. But here's one of the books that was purchased. The Paleontology, a true book, has lots of pictures and graphs and things. Then here's a picture of Emma doing her homework, trying to excavate out the dinosaurs. There are actually two of those that came with this this set. And she loved the glasses that came with it to protect your eyesight. And this is where it was, where it came from, Discovery, Mind-Blowing Dinosaurs. Excellent. They were really fun to put together, and she actually took two weeks to play with those and get them out. And then we found a Burstein Bear Dinosaur Dig book, and she she read she could read that, so that was that worked out really well and we allowed her to, in her play, and put all this together. And I would tell you that one of the advantages of using Zoom one-on-one is when I'm going through this PowerPoint in this next section, it will be the whole show. I can tell when she's, you know, getting a little bored or whatever, or, and we can move on, or I can ask her some questions, or she can ask questions. So it goes pretty well. Our third lesson, and I'm going to show you the whole PowerPoint for this. There are 43 slides that go with this one. But again, I start every one the same way. Here's the cover page, picture of her doing her homework. That's a picture of me when I was teaching high school in a desk that has now itself become an artifact. And the woman who helped discover Sue, the most complete T-Rex, and Dinosaur Ridge in the lower right-hand corner, which is right there in uh, Denver, and she's been there many times. So our lesson words this time, Loch Ness, Field Museum, Dinosaur Ridge, and then a discussion of what extinct means. So I started off by explaining the dinosaur myths, and, and she was asking questions about that. Then here's a picture of a T-Rex balloon, which is actually used by one of the Canadian universities to recruit students over the Badlands. And then there are three pictures of the petrified forest. And then showing those three pictures, I asked her, are they an artifact or are they a fossil? She said they were a fossil, so we're in good shape. We're making progress. Then I showed her a map of the world, and all the red marks are where they find dinosaurs. And then we talked about where she lives on this map and then how it's really in a good place to find dinosaurs. And then she mentioned Dinosaur Ridge because I knew she'd been there. So I have these pictures of Dinosaur Ridge where you enter into the site. There are the footprints along the one side of the ridge. And this is an aerial view showing showing the ridge and the visitor center and the discovery center. So they have some excavating things that you can do. But with COVID-19, they've I believe they've shut that down. Then we looked in the, on the map and found found a place in Denver, which is a Best Western hotel called the Dinosaur Hotel. This is a view back behind the desk when you enter in, a nice stegosaurus. And then they have fossils in one of their sitting rooms. And here is the uh, cafeteria where you can eat with more fossils hanging from the ceiling. And then Emma mentioned that she's seen fossils at a golf course north of the city. And so they went back that week to get some pictures. So here she is pointing to the Triceratops bone that's right up up here. So then I found a picture of a complete fossilized triceratops. And then here is a mock-up of a triceratops. And then I used the opportunity to show her different dinosaurs, the brachiosaur, the areopteryx, talked about the bird, the bird dinosaur, and then uh, showed, her, showed her this picture from out in Dinosaur National Monument in western Colorado of the visitor center, where they have, kind of like at uh, Dinosaur Ridge, where they have fossils, and this picture of a paleontologist working on uh, the dinosaur bones there. Just before we get ready to start on the T-Rex, I showed her this picture. This is a picture of me when I was the same age that Emma is playing with my dinosaurs, including the T-Rex, which you can see there with the big belly as they were displayed in the 1950s and 60s. And then we move on and we see this picture of Sue Hendrickson, which she's seen on several occasions. And I talked about how she is the, one of the, is the lady who helped discover Sue, the T-Rex, which is why it's called Sue. And then we go to the Field Museum and I show some pictures of the Field Museum showing Sue. There she is when you walk in. And you go down below, and then if you go up above, where she has her own toy section, souvenir section, this is a nice view looking down on the people. And then we looked at the teeth, front view of the face, and then the uh, the skull when they had when they first found it, and how that was expanded out, that it had a fossilized brain. And then I showed two pictures of the side of the... Well, the first one is the actual skull. Uh, it's so heavy that the skull 
skull on the model on the on the body down below is actually a replica because the titanium couldn't hold it in the proper position so they have the original head up on the second floor and this is an exact replica so we got to see sue since Emma was so fascinated by the dinosaur fossil poop, I found the nice picture of one to show her here. And then the other picture shows her mother. Courtney is my youngest of two daughters. And here she is posing in front of a T-Rex at a museum in New Mexico when she was in high school. Next, we look at this fossil of a coelacanth. It's supposed to be extinct for 60 million years or so. And then I found these pictures of actual coelacanths in the Indian Ocean and a map of where they find most of them in about a 10,000 kilometer area. And it's one of those that's not appreciably different. And we talked about that and then led into Loch Ness. Emma knew that Sherry and I were supposed to take a vacation this year and go to England and Scotland and that we were very much looking forward to Loch Ness. So it was a, a natural thing to include it in the dinosaur discussion and talk about how sometimes people make fakes. So I showed her the map of Loch Ness and we talked a little bit about that and then I showed her this picture, which is, of course, one of the great fakes. It's nothing more than a piece of wood, but it's taken from very close range. And then I discussed about if there is something, what is it? So here is a plesiosaur skeleton. And then, of course, near Loch Ness, they have a variation of that that you can get, come and have your picture taken. So we talked a little bit about Loch Ness and extinction and, and things like that. And her homework for this week was to continue excavating her dinosaur bones, read her dinosaur books, and go out and to the golf course and show me, get me a picture of her showing the Triceratops bones. And so that's what they did. And there's her Triceratops bones picture. Well, after dinosaurs, it was time to go to another lesson, which was on early man. But we're not going to talk about Homo erectus and Zinzanthropus and all of those others. We're going to talk about the cavemen. We're going to talk about Neanderthals and Cro-Magnon man. So here we have pictures. And of course, it's her fossil picture with the dinosaur bone. Again, I'm still there with the bear. And we have the cave art. And we have uh, Homo sapiens, uh, Neanderthal. And then this slide down below is actually from a book on paleoanthropology from 1962 and they still have the man hunched over and I talked to Emma about the fact that the reason he's hunched over is the first one they found he had rickets or I told her that he was sick and then when they put the bones together he was bent over and so everybody thought that they just were bent over and the words from this lesson as you can see paleolithic paleolithic and Maria and Maria's little girl who discovered one of the caves with the cave painting that fascinated her and we talked about domestication of, of taming. And the homework for this was, was really fun. Here's a picture of Emma with her cave art. Now, one of the teachers in her high school, Phyllis Shannon, did this in her advanced Spanish class. She had a little hallway room, and so she put paper up on the wall, and the kids came out and did, you know, drawings of their hands like you'd find on, on, on rock art, paleoglyph, paleoglyphs. And so I had Courtney do that in one of the walls in their house, and so she then drew cave people. They're supposed to be her and her mom and, and Elmo and and then I bought her a little di uh, a little cave girl's outfit. And so she worked on that for a whole week doing all kinds of stuff. And she wanted this. I told her how they made some of the things by spitting through their fingers, but mom wouldn't let her do that. And then one of the books that we had purchased was a DK Find Out the Stone Age. And it had a bunch of things that you could do. And one of them was build your own little hut. And so she went out in the yard and built this hut and had some fossils and put Elmo inside the Stone Age hut. So she had a lot of fun with that. And here's the, the book, the DK Find Out on the Stone Age. So that was the next lesson and her homework for that week. Well, the final lesson of the unit on archaeology and early man and Stonehenge was lesson five, which was Stonehenge. And so there's a, her homework where she's working on her cave art. There's Sherry and I at Stonehenge. There's Carhenge. And there's some other assorted things that go in there with it. And then the words for the lesson, mammoth, megalith, Clovis, Stonehenge, Carhenge, which she will see in the slides. And then her homework was to put together her own little Stonehenge. And so I found one online. Most of the stuff I've been buying from Amazon, but this I found on eBay and it was a, a miniature and you just had to follow the directions and put it in the, in the place. And so you see that she ended up doing that. Well, in the process of talking about Stonehenge, I showed a picture where certain times 
of the year, the solstices and whatever, people come out to Stonehenge. And one of them was a pretty rowdy picture showing people dressed up as druids and others drinking and what have you. And so in one of her play things, she took some of her LOL dolls and put them around inside where they're not supposed to be. And then she had other dolls who had to move them out because they were too too rowdy and making a mess. So she was making sure that her Stonehenge stayed clean. And so she messes with that quite a while. And then I also talked about the Alps Iceman, Otzi. She was fascinated with that. And we're getting ready to go to Egypt. So the Ice Mummy came up. And so we found the book on the Ice Mummy. And uh, she was supposed to be reading that with her mom as well. So we've just finished this unit and then we'll start Egypt. So I'll do one of these for Egypt as well. And I would ask that if you have any comments, have any questions, put them in the comments of this. And then I'm going to add them all together. I'll do this unit, the Egypt and the Mesopotamia. And then I'll add all of those questions together and I'll do a little video question and answering and fact and stuff like that. So it'll help you out.